All right, so in this lecture, we're going to take a look at conditionals in Kotlin. So we're going to talk about the if expression as well as the when expression. And we're going to see also that there really are expressions in Kotlin and not statements. So let's first of all go ahead and look at the if expression, which works pretty much the same way as in Java, except that it's an expression and not a statement. So let's go ahead and create an integer variable here and set this to 17. And then you can go ahead and check, for example, if i is less than 15, you want to, let's say, print line i is pretty small. And let's actually go ahead and make this greater than so that we actually get the message as well. And you can see that when we run this, it's going to come back and print out i is pretty small. I'm going to just use the error up key in order to go back to the last command. And what you can also do, of course, just like in Java is to have an else block and say, well, in this case, else would be if i is greater or equal to 15, you're going to say, let's say it's pretty large. And of course, in this case, now that I've actually changed the condition to less than 15 in the if block, it's going to print out it's pretty large. And of course, just like in any other language, you can also have an arbitrary amount of else if blocks. So let's say else if i is greater or equal 15 and i is less than or equal to 25. I'm going to say it's OK. And you can have an else block at the end, just like in Java again, and say print line. It's pretty large. So you can also see that the end operator here to combine two conditional expressions looks the same way as in Java. And you also have the or operator here also with the same syntax. And you can also use the exclamation mark to negate an expression. So let's go ahead and press control enter to run this. And it's going to say it's okay because 17 is somewhere between 15 and 25. All right, so, so far everything exactly as in Java, but as I already mentioned, the if blocks and also the when blocks that we're going to look at are actually expressions. So what you can do is you can go ahead and say val x equals and set this to the if block because, well, it's an expression, so you can assign it to a variable. Now, in this case, if we run this, this doesn't actually have a return value. So it's like assigning a void value to x. So if I go ahead and just put an X, control enter to get the value of it, it's not going to come back with anything because there's no actual return value for this if block. Now in order to define a return value, you can add a value to the end of or to the last line of each block in here. So the last line in each block, so inside the if block here, inside the else if block, and inside the else block will then define the return value. So let's say in this case, we want x to be set to small. Here we want x to be set to medium. And here we want x to be set to large. Now in this case, if I go ahead and run this and then try to print out x, it's going to come back with medium in this case. Well, there's not actually anything coming back. I think I went a bit too fast there for the Colin REPL. So let's actually go ahead and run this block here again and wait for the print line statement to finish. All right, so it looks like the Kotlin REPL crashed on me there. Unfortunately, it seems like the preview version of Android Studio isn't too stable. But I recreated the variable i with a value of 17. And now let's go ahead and run this same block of code again to set the variable x using an if expression. Now you can see first that it's going to print out it is, it's OK, which comes from the actual print line statement in here. And now if I try to get the value of x, you can see that it has been set to medium. So this was the return type in this case of this whole block, which means that x was set to this value. You can put anything you want into this last line to define the return value. So it doesn't have to be a string. You can put any return value you like in each of the last lines in each block. Now, one question you might have is what kind of return value does the if expression have 
if there's no return value in the last line. So for example, before when we had print line, what's actually the return value of that? And the answer is that it's a Kotlin unit type. So you could basically define a value of this and say value is unit. But this is no use because, well, unit is basically what in other languages is referred to by void. So it's like no return type at all, but it's just interesting to know that if you have a function also later on that doesn't define a return type, then the return type is implicitly unit, which is basically void. So you can, of course, feel free to ignore this possibility to have a return type for if statements and use them just like in Java. But remember that you do have this possibility and it's actually quite useful in order to avoid that x here has to be initialized with null before the if statement just in order to then set it inside, which is how you can often or how you often have to do it in Java. So this is also again another way to avoid nulls in Kotlin by just returning them directly from if expression here. Because this way you don't have to initialize the value x here, but instead you can just directly set it to the return value of the if statement or if expression. Now one last thing I want to mention here for ifs is that the Kotlin compiler is quite clever in this regard when using nullable values. So let's say we have again a string, which can be a nullable string. And I'm going to say this to, let's say, Colin in this case. So when you have this, remember you can just call string.length, for example, because string could be null. But if you go ahead and say if string is not null, and then go into the if block here, you can actually do things like print line string.length. And this, in this case, is going to come back with six and without any compiler errors, because inside the if block here, what Kotlin or the Kotlin compiler is going to do is it's going to automatically cast the string here to a non-nullable string type. So you can use this here without the save or the unsafe call operator, because Kotlin already knows that string can never be null inside here. So this is one of the ways that Kotlin handles nullable types really intelligently and really helps you to avoid any unnecessary, well, complexity in your code. So generally, in many cases where you have an object that is nullable by its declaration, but cannot be null at a certain point in the code, the Kotlin compiler will already notice this and then allow you to work with the object as a non-nullable type. And when we talk about object orientation later on, we're also going to see how the Kotlin compiler handles many more things intelligently like this for also types of objects. But for now, this is all about the if expression in Kotlin. So let's now go ahead and move on to the when expression.